for most of Western history, we've had this binary view about what gender is and what sex is, and we put people into the pink box or the blue box. And I think where, where men really suffer when, uh, when they are thrown into these really rigid um, binary roles um, is that they are not fully able to realize the, the complexity of who they are as a human being. Society and societal expectations. Um, the biggest influence was probably not my father, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. It was actually, um, I was kind of self-taught by my mother, actually. Uh, my dad is, uh, <clears throat> one thing I think of guys is not, not being sensitive, and I think I, I realized that growing up with my dad, he, he wasn't like the person that was really into like a hug or, um, you know, being more of like showing physical affection. Tough, feels that they need to take care of other people financially. Also, um, macho, I think of the word macho, you know. Re yeah, values, respect, mm -hmm. um, how to live morally, live ethically, do right by people. I had asked my father this question where on TV, the president was addressing the nation and he was seated with his legs crossed, not square, but rather angled. I said, Dad, I was like, why is the president sitting like a woman? But it's interesting that my father had already imparted on me uh, how a man sits. Um, everybody thinks that as a man, um, you can go to, you can go into war and, and come out of it, uh, you know, a, a better man. And I, I, it changes you completely. Um, I didn't know if I would, how I would respond, and when I responded with, okay, I can get over it, I'll block it out, and let's get things moving where I need them to go, and executing my mission, um, and, and not thinking about me personally, how I am putting myself in harm's way, if you will. Sure. Um, that, to me, was a defining moment uh, of, of holding it down, if you will. Uh, and again, it does go back to that macho, hey, I don't need anybody's help, I can handle anything. So, um, people say, oh, you're like a girl the way you shop, like, you just take too long. And it's like, I don't care, but, but to take, have someone, like, say something like that is just, I, I don't know, I wonder what they're trying to say. Oh, yeah, I, I've been, I was been gay bashed and everything in, in high school, and, uh, went to a less than accepting high school for some time, and was not allowed to be myself. There was a moment in college, my senior year, where, uh, my, my boyfriend at the time, we were holding hands and an SUV like chock full of guys drove by and yelled what you can imagine that they yelled, uh, horrible things. They stopped the car and they got out um, and one pulled a baseball bat out of the out of the back and thank God for the, uh, the designated driver who wasn't drunk and he was able in a bro-ish kind of way to say, oh, don't worry about those fags. You don't, remember if you touch them, we could get in trouble. Remember if you touch them, you could catch what they've got. You don't want AIDS. Come on guys, get spaghetti. So he said these horrible things, but those horrible things uh, saved us. In my first two deployments, I did that. Uh, I came back and said, I'm a man. I can deal with it, no issues. By the third and fourth deployment, uh, my, my boss and my wife uh, forced me to go talk to somebody. Um, never thought it would work, and it really did help me. Uh, so it's one of those things where, yeah, it is a, it is, you fall into that trap of, hey, I don't want to be, you know, I don't need anybody's help. Uh, but when you do actually ask for it, uh, yeah, for me personally, I found a, a, a lot of value out of it. Let's stop labeling and just do what makes us happy. Join the movement, share how you break free from male stereotypes by making your own I am a man and I poster and posting it with the hashtag I am a man. Uh, I am a man and have asked for help.